ओके गाइस गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम बैक टू इलेक्ट्रिक सर्क्यूट्स सो यू आर डिस्कसिंग व्हाट एसी एनालिसिस सो व्हाट इज दिस एसी एनालिसिस हाउ द सर्क्यूट विल रेस्पॉन्ड टू साइनस ऑयल इनपुट हाउ विल द सर्क्यूट रेस्पॉन्ड टू ए साइनस ऑयल इनपुट मीनिंग व्हेन द सर्क्यूट इज ड्रिवन बाय ए साइनस ऑयल सोर्स इट कैन बी a sinus oil current source or a sinus oil voltage source what are the various uh, voltages and currents in the circuit going to be at steady state and this steady state is also referred to as what sinus oil steady state okay and the real essence of signals and systems is what that any linear system for which the input is a sine wave even the output is going to be a sine wave at the same frequency so here you see let's say this box it's a linear network let us say this box is what it's a linear network so let me write linear network so when will this uh, box be a linear network be when inside the box you have only linear circuit elements inside the box you should have only linear circuit elements then this box is said to be linear now what are the different uh, linear circuit elements we have the most common ones are what resistors capacitors inductors and also some linear dependent sources so inside the box we have what a few resistors a few capacitors a few inductors and also some linear dependent sources okay in such a case this box is said to be a linear network and let's say for this uh, linear network we have two terminals through which we can access this box or the network so these two terminals through which we can access the network can we not call it a port so is it on a linear one port network so we already seen this uh, linear one port network you know any linear one port network can be replaced with a thevenin eagland or a norton eagland and so on that is from the thevenin's uh, theorem okay so right here also we have what a linear one port network now let us say this linear you know one port network is being driven by a sinus oil voltage source so what source is driving this linear network this linear network is being driven by a sinus oil voltage source let the value of the sinus oil voltage source be some vm cos omega t plus theta so what is the value of the sinus oil voltage source connected to this uh, linear network it is some vm cos omega t plus theta now because this linear network is what is what being driven by a sinus oil voltage source this network will it not draw a current from the source yes or no this network it would draw a current from the sinus oil voltage source and that current at steady state is also going to be sinus oil at the same frequency so what we will do let us call so this applied voltage can we not call it the input voltage so what is the input sinus oil voltage v in of t what is it v in of t it is vm cos omega t plus theta where vm is what the amplitude theta is what the phase angle of the applied sinus oil voltage now this network like i already said it would draw a current from the source and that current let's call it i in of t let's call it i in of t now when this system or when this circuit reaches what steady state i told you what each and every current and also each and every voltage in the circuit is going to be sinusoidal at the same frequency yes so at steady state at steady state this input current drawn by the network input current drawn by the network is also going to be sinusoidal at the same frequency let it be some you know im cos 
omega t plus phi now because you know it's a linear network all currents and voltages are going to be at uh, same frequency what frequency same as the frequency of the input source in fact the frequency of the input uh, sine solve source is also going to be the operating frequency of the circuit okay so if this sine solve voltage source is at uh, 5 radians per second then the operating frequency of this circuit is also going to be 5 radians per second so at steady state the input current drawn by the network from the input source is also going to be sine solve at the same frequency you can see the input voltage frequency is what omega the input current frequency is also what omega yes now you know any sine solve quantity can be expressed as a complex number and this complex number is what we call the phasor yes so in the phasor domain this uh, small vein of t would it not become capital vein so what is capital vein it is the phasor input voltage similarly in the phasor domain this uh, small i n of t would it not become capital i n so just like uh, capital v n is what the phasor input voltage capital i n is what the phasor input current so you have to be very clear about the notation so capital v n it is what the phasor input voltage similarly capital i n is what it is the phasor input current so capital v n is what the phasor input voltage and capital i n is what the phasor input current okay now we can actually write expressions for both the phasor input voltage as well as the phasor input current so in the last session we had uh, plenty of examples where we went from uh, time domain to phasor domain and also from phasor domain back to the time domain here also we will try to convert the two quantities that is what the input voltage and the input current which are currently in time domain into what their corresponding phasor notation okay so small v of t is what vm cos omega t plus theta whenever we have a sine solve quantity i told you what you first write down amplitude followed by phase angle if it is a cosine function then you just leave it like that but if it is expressed as a sine function then you should add a factor which is what minus j so what is capital v in going to be it is simply vm angle theta in the same way capital i n that is the phase or input current is going to be i m angle phi vm angle theta and then i m angle phi now we have something called input impedance what is it input impedance denoted by z in okay so z in it is what the input impedance and what is the definition of input impedance of any network input impedance of the network let me write input impedance of the network or input impedance of the linear network here so what is this uh, definition of input impedance it is the ratio of the phasor input voltage to the phasor input current always input impedance is what the phasor input voltage divided by the phasor input current drawn by the network so phasor input voltage is what capital v in divided by phasor input current is what capital i n so capital v in divided by capital i n this is what is called the input impedance of this linear network phasor input voltage divided by phasor input current now any phasor is what it's a complex number right yes so phasor input voltage is one complex number phasor input current is what another complex number so look at this input impedance is it not a ratio of two complex numbers it is what ratio of two complex numbers in fact here already we have the expressions of both capital v n and capital i n so capital v n is what v m angle theta capital i n is what 
i am angle phi if you write those two things in place of vn and i in we will get this thing vm angle theta divided by i am angle phi so this can further be written as vm divided by i am times angle of theta minus phi so what kind of number is this uh, input impedance is it not a complex number ratio of two complex numbers is also going to be a complex number in fact if you observe here vm by im is it not the magnitude of the impedance and theta minus 5 it is what the angle of the impedance so vm by im is what magnitude of the impedance whereas theta minus 5 is what the angle of the impedance so this is what form of representation of the input impedance it is the polar form representation of the impedance okay or the input impedance magnitude followed by the phase angle what are the units of impedance because impedance is what ratio of phase or voltage to the phase or current voltage by current it has to be ohms so always impedance is going to be in the units of ohms so it is similar to what resistance but the difference is what that the impedance is the ratio of i mean you should not say impedance is what ratio of voltage to current impedance is what ratio of phase or voltage to the phase or current and whereas resistance is what a real number always whereas the impedance in general is going to be a complex number well in some special cases it may be purely real or it may be purely imaginary but in general any impedance is what it's a complex number so this kind of introduces the notion of impedance which is ratio of phase or voltage to the phase or current i hope it is clear Now let's take uh, various uh, circuit elements and let us quickly compute the impedance expression of each and every circuit element starting with the resistor. You know resistor it obeys what Ohm's law uh, V of t is equal to what R times I of t is. Yes. So let's say we have a resistor whose resistance is what R and across the resistance let's say the voltage is what v of t and through the resistor let the current be i of t and let's say i of t it is some you know i m cos omega t i of t let it be some i m cos omega t now if i of t is what i m cos omega t what is the same current in the phasor domain so small i of t in time domain will become what capital i in the phasor domain so what is capital i so i m cos omega t is same as what i m cos omega t plus zero degrees so directly you can say capital i is going to be i m angle zero degrees now you know from ohm's law always voltage across a resistor will be equal to what current through the resistor multiplied with the resistance value so it is going to be i of t into r which is same as what i m r and then cos omega t so this is what the voltage across the resistor in the time domain again what is the same voltage in the phase of domain small v of t it becomes what capital v again this capital v is it not going to be i m r angle zero degrees yes so here you can note one important point what is the angle of the current it is zero degrees what is the angle of the voltage it is also zero degrees so here point number one is what angle of v is equal to what angle of i that means the phase difference between the voltage and the current it is it is what zero so always for a resistor always for a resistor v and i are in phase i mean 
point. It's a very trivial point which everybody knows, but this is how it comes about. Okay. Always for a resistor, voltage and current are going to be in phase. And then the second point is what? What is the impedance of the resistor? Z denotes what? Impedance. ZR, it means what? Impedance of the resistor. So what is the impedance of any element, of any two terminal network or two terminal element? The phase R voltage divided by the phase R current. So ZR, it would be equal to what? Capital V divided by capital I. Already we have capital V and also capital I. So in place of capital V, you just write IMR angle 0 degrees divided by capital I which is IM angle 0 degrees. So you know angle 0 degrees, angle 0 degrees will get cancelled. IM and IM also will get cancelled. So what is ZR? It is simply R. It is what simply R. So the point is what impedance of any resistor is same as what the value of the resistance. So if you have a 1 kilo ohm resistor, then its impedance is also what 1 kilo ohm. So as you can see, it is what purely real. Yes, impedance of a resistor is what purely real. Okay. Let's say our next element, it is a capacitor. Our next element is what a capacitor. Let's say this is the capacitor of capacitance C. And across the capacitor, let the voltage drop be some V of T. And through the capacitor, let the current be some I of T. And let's say the voltage across the capacitor, it is some sinusoidal voltage. You can consider anything. Let it be some Vm cos omega T. So what is this Vm cos omega T? It is the sinusoidal voltage across the capacitor. Now what is the same voltage in the phase R domain? Would it not be Vm angle 0 degrees? Yes. If you know the voltage across any resistor, you can always compute or get the expression for the current flowing through the resistor because capacitor, what is the current voltage relationship? I is equal to what? C times dV by dt. Yes. So I of t, what is it? I of t is equal to what? C times d by dt of V of t. So this is same as what? C times d by dt of Vm cos omega t. What is d by dt of Vm cos omega t? Is it not uh, d by, I mean, uh, Vm? Uh, sin omega t multiplied with uh, minus omega. So this thing is same as what? Minus c vm omega minus c vm omega and then sin omega t minus c vm omega sin omega t. This is what the sinusoidal current that is uh, flowing through the capacitor. Now let us express the current also in the phase R domain. So in the phase R domain, small i of t is going to become what? Capital I. Yes. So in the phase R domain, capital I. I told you what, whether it is cosine or sine, first you write the amplitude followed by phase angle. Yes. Then, depending on whether it is cosine or sine, you add that extra factor, which is what? Minus J. So now you can think of minus C Vm omega as what the amplitude, look at this, minus C Vm omega, again sin omega t it means what sin of omega t plus 0 degrees, which is same as what angle 0 degrees. Now because it is expressed as a sin function, you add this extra factor which is what minus j, that's all. Now you can simplify this a bit, minus into minus is what plus? Then you have plus j, and j is what angle 90 degrees. So this is uh, same as what? This is actually same as j c v m omega. If you want, you can write this in polar form as what? c v m omega, and then angle 90 degrees, and then angle 90 degrees. So here again, you can see that what is the phase of the voltage, 
what is the angle of the voltage? Angle of the voltage is what 0 degrees. In this particular example, angle of voltage is what 0 degrees. What is the angle of the current? Is it not 90 degrees? So angle of voltage is what 0 degrees. Angle of current is what 90 degrees. Clearly, angle of current is more than the angle of the voltage by 90 degrees. That means what current leads voltage by 90 degrees. Okay. Again, it's a very trivial point. So always for a capacitor, you know, I leads V by 90 degrees. I leads V by 90 degrees. And then, what about the impedance of a capacitor? Again, impedance is what denoted by Z. Impedance of capacitor will be denoted by Zc. I told you what, impedance is always defined as the ratio of the phasor voltage to the phasor current. So Zc, again, it would be equal to what? Capital V divided by capital I. So what is capital V, the phasor voltage? which is Vm angle 0 degrees divided by uh, capital I. Capital I, let us use this thing. So will it not be Jc Vm omega? Remember angle 0 degrees is what same as 1. So here Vm and Vm will get cancelled out. What is left? 1 by J omega C. Again there is something you already know, impedance of capacitor is what 1 by j omega c, but this is how you get that expression for the impedance. Ratio of phasor voltage to the phasor current, 1 by j omega c. We will get, we'll get back to this in a bit. But before that, we will quickly look at the inductor. So already we have seen what resistor and capacitor. Let us look at the inductor. So let's say this is the inductor whose inductance is what L and then uh, let V of T be the applied voltage across the inductor and let I of T be the current through the inductor and let's say I of T is what some I m cos omega t. I of T, let it be some I m cos omega t. Clearly the current through the inductor, it is, it is some sinusoidal current. Now what is the same current in the phasor domain? First of all it becomes what capital I and capital I will be equal to what I m at an angle 0 degrees. Now if you know the current through the inductor, you can always get the expression for the voltage across the inductor because you know V is equal to what L times d by dt of the current, yes. So V of t, that is what voltage across the inductor is going to be L times d i of t by dt. What is the derivative of this expression that is I m cos omega t? Will it not be minus I m omega uh, sin omega t? So it will be what minus L I m omega sin of omega t. Now let us express the voltage in its uh, phasor form. In the phasor domain, this uh, small v of t is going to become capital V. So what is capital V going to be? First, you write the amplitude, whatever is there, which is minus L. I m omega and then sin omega t it means what sin of omega t plus 0 degrees you simply write angle 0 degrees since it is what a sin function you add this extra factor which is what minus j again minus into minus it becomes what 1 so is it not going to be this j l i m omega which is same as what l i m omega angle 90 degrees L I m omega angle 90 degrees so once again we can clearly see that what is the angle of the current angle of the current is what 0 degrees whereas the angle of the voltage is what 90 degrees 
angle of the current is what 0 degrees angle of the voltage is what 90 degrees so clearly voltage leads current by 90 degrees previously for the capacitor we found that current leads voltage by 90 degrees and before that we found that for a resistor voltage and current are always going to be in phase meaning the phase difference between the voltage and current for a resistor it is what zero but now for the inductor it is the voltage that leads current by 90 degrees okay so this means this means v leads i by 90 degrees v leads i by 90 degrees okay and then we also have zl zl again is what the impedance of the inductor what is the impedance of the inductor again ratio of the phase or voltage to the phase or current ratio of phase or voltage to the phase or current already we have the expressions for both capital v and capital i capital v is what this j l i m omega divided by capital i is what this i m angle 0 degrees angle 0 degrees is what one i would simply write i m because angle 0 degrees is what one again i m and i m will get cancelled so z l is it not going to be j omega l z l is going to be what j omega l so these are the expressions for the impedances of the three passive elements that we have resistor capacitor and inductor well i told you what any impedance in general it is what a complex number impedance in general is what a complex number so z is always going to be of the form r plus j x because any complex number will have what a real part and also an imaginary part now the impedance being a complex number also will have a real part and an imaginary part the real part is what denoted by r and the imaginary part is what denoted by x so you already know that this r is what the resistance or the resistive part of the impedance whereas this x is what the reactance or the reactive part of the impedance so what are the two parts of any impedance the real part is called as what resistance and the imaginary part is called as what reactance okay well impedance is what ohms i mean impedance will have units of ohms resistance in the units of ohms even reactance will be in the units of ohms ohms plus ohms even z is what going to be in the units of ohms okay anyway resistance and uh, reactance resistance and reactance they are they are the real and imaginary parts of any impedance okay now going back to the earlier three results so first is what zr zr is what r now this r is same as what r plus j0 so what is the reactance of a resistor reactance meaning what imaginary part of impedance clearly it is what zero so that means uh, for the resistor there is only resistance i mean it's very obvious but for a resistor because reactive part or the reactance is what zero resistor is going to be purely resistive yes reactance is going to be zero yes and then if you take a inductor for inductor what is the impedance that we got is it not j omega l again this uh, j omega l can be written as what zero plus j times omega l 0 plus j times omega l what is the zero is it not the real part of the impedance so what is the real part of the resistive part of the impedance it is zero for an inductor and what is the imaginary part of the impedance it is omega l so what is this omega l is it not the reactance reactance of what the inductor so xl is what the inductive reactance okay so xl just write it here so what is this xl called it is called as what inductive reactance is it positive or negative it is positive and it is equal to what omega times l so inductive reactance 
it is same as what omega l clearly it is what positive so because the resistive part of the impedance or the real part of the impedance of an inductor is what zero and the reactive part is not zero inductor is what a purely reactive element resistor is what purely resistive inductor is what purely reactive and the reactance of inductor inductor is what denoted by xl and it is positive and equal to what omega l and finally we also have the this thing which is what the capacitor whose impedance is what 1 by j omega c this is 1 by j omega c 1 by j is what minus j 1 by j is what minus j so it is same as what minus j by omega c again this minus j by omega c can be written as what 0 plus j times minus 1 by omega c so impedance of capacitor can be written as what 0 plus j times minus 1 by omega c now is it not in the standard form like what r plus j x what is r 0 what is x it is minus 1 by omega c even for a capacitor you can see the resistive or the real part of the impedance is what zero whereas the reactive or the imaginary part of the impedance is not zero because the resistive part is what zero and the reactive part is not zero even the capacitor just like the inductor is what a purely reactive element so we have two reactive elements in the form of what the capacitor and the inductor and we have one purely resistive element in the form of what resistor okay but in general networks can be having any nature because networks will contain what resistors capacitors and inductors so they need not be purely resistive or purely reactive all the time it will be a combination of resistive plus capacitive or resistive plus inductive so on and so forth okay so zc uh, is what r plus uh, jx where r is what zero x is what minus one by omega c so what is the reactance of the capacitor what is the reactance of the capacitor clearly it is what negative and equal to what minus 1 by omega c so just like xl is what the inductive reactance xl is what the inductive reactance xc is going to be the capacitive reactance okay what is it capacitive reactance and you can see it is negative and equal to what minus 1 by omega c minus 1 by omega c that's all resistor purely resistive impedance is same as what the resistance itself inductor and capacitor both are purely reactive because the resistive part of impedance of both the elements is what zero and the capacitive reactance is what negative and equal to minus 1 by omega c whereas the inductive reactance is what positive and equal to what omega l even for reactants units are what ohms okay so again what is this uh, zr impedance impedance is what you should not say impedance is voltage by current you should always say impedance is what ratio of phasor voltage to the phasor current so z you know is equal to what capital v by capital i z is what capital v by capital i now just like resistance and conductance are inverse of each other even impedance and admittance are inverse of each other impedance is what denoted by z whereas the admittance which is the inverse of impedance is denoted by capital y so you know capital y is called as what admittance and this admittance it is actually what inverse of impedance now impedance is what phasor voltage divided by phasor current so admittance would it not be phasor current divided by phasor voltage because it is what inverse of impedance that is what 1 by z so it must be capital i divided by capital v so impedance uh, units are what ohms so admittance uh, units must be 1 by ohm or ohm inverse or mos or siemens yes so admittance units are MOS or Siemens okay I'll just write it so units for admittance are what MOS or Siemens 
now impedance is what kind of number it's a complex number now this admittance which is inverse of impedance is it not 1 by a complex number because z is what complex 1 by z is also what going to be another complex number so even the admittance will have a real part and an imaginary part what is the standard form of impedance it is r plus j x let me write it here so z is what r plus j x where r is what the resistive part of the impedance x is what the reactive part of the impedance r plus j x in the same way even the admittance will have a real part and also an imaginary part now that real part is denoted by g and it is called the conductance real part of admittance is called as what conductance which is denoted by g and the imaginary part of the admittance is denoted by capital b and it is called as what susceptance it is called as what susceptance so what is the standard form of any admittance g plus j b what is it g plus j b j is what conductance b is what susceptance okay so g is what conductance whereas b it is what susceptance okay again please uh, be aware of the fact that it is the impedance and the admittance which are inverse of each other impedance and admittance are inverse of each other it is not that r and g are inverse of each other and similarly x and b are also not inverse of each other you understood yes so here you should be careful about the fact that g is not equal to 1 by r and also b is not the same as 1 by x so in general g is not equal to 1 by r and b is also not equal to what 1 by x because both the complex numbers are inverses of each other both the real parts are not inverse of each other both the imaginary parts are also not inverses of each other it is entire complex number it is entire one complex number which is going to be inverse of another complex number okay so there is about impedance and admittance which are inverses of each other and uh, impedance is what phasor voltage by phasor current whereas admittance is what phasor current by phasor voltage okay now the beauty of this uh, concept of impedance is what if you look at impedance impedance is what phasor voltage by phasor current yes so is it not like this i mean first by definition z is what capital v divided by capital i so from here can't we write v is equal to what i into z v is equal to what i into z is it not similar to ohm's law expression v is equal to what ir v equal to i into z it is very much the same as what ohm's law ohm's law in the time domain or in the phasor domain it is ohm's law in the phasor domain see what is the only element uh, that obeys ohm's law it is a resistor what is the only element that obeys ohm's law it is the resistor strictly speaking it is only resistor that obeys what ohm's law capacitor it does not obey ohm's law ohm's law means what voltage across the element should be proportional to the current through the element for a capacitor how are the current and voltage related to each other i is equal to what c dv by dt clearly current and voltage are not proportional to each other for a capacitor even for an inductor the voltage and current are not directly proportional to each other it is only for resistor that the voltage and current are directly proportional to each other so that's why i said strictly speaking ohms law is applicable only for resistor but if you are looking at voltages and currents in the phasor domain if you look at voltages and currents in the phasor domain then for any element be it the capacitor or the inductor the voltage is proportional to what current so in the phasor domain capacitor and inductor seem to obey ohms law so in the phasor domain because the phasor voltage you can say is what proportional to phasor current
So clearly capital V is proportional to what? Capital I. Voltage proportional to current. Partly true. Actual way to say it is what? Phase R voltage proportional to phase R current. That means our elements, capacitor and inductor, are going to are going to obey Ohm's law in which domain? In the phase R domain. Okay. So this is what Ohm's law in phase R domain. So that is why we do the analysis in phase R domain instead of in time domain because in phase R domain capacitor and inductor also seem to obey which law ohms law which means they can be replaced with their respective impedances once we replace all the elements with impedances all the elements are going to what obey ohms law in the phase of domain so once all elements are obeying ohms law it is as good as analyzing a resistive circuit so even though the circuit contains what capacitors and inductors but if you are doing analysis in the phase of domain the network it sort of becomes what resistive because all elements in the phase of domain are going to be replaced by their impedances and impedance itself means what voltage proportional to current i mean phase r voltage proportional to what phase r current and uh, that, that is what some some form of ohm's law yes and it is very easy to do the analysis of resistive uh, you know circuits okay so whatever techniques we already studied uh, for circuit analysis uh, will be directly used even in this uh, science hall steady state analysis for example we have uh, nodal analysis we have mesh analysis we have super position uh, we have uh, a maximum power transfer theorem we have thevenin's theorem norton's theorem all of those things can be conveniently applied during the analysis of circuits driven by science all, sorry, uh, science all sources at steady state okay so that is the reason why we replace all elements with their respective impedances okay because all elements will start obeying ohm's law because in the phase of domain the phase of voltage is always proportional to what phase of current voltage proportional to current is some form of what ohm's law okay and uh, the other important points we had from the earlier discussion are what uh, for a capacitor current leads voltage by 90 degrees and for a inductor voltage leads current by 90 degrees and for a resistor voltage and current are always in phase or the phase difference is what zero yes okay now let's say we have a branch that contains a resistor and a capacitor connected in series. We have a branch that has a resistor and a capacitor connected in series. Now what will be same for both the elements? In series, current is going to be same, right? Yes. So in series, current is going to be same. Let's say the current in this branch, it is some I. And let it flow from left to right. Current flowing from left to right, plus minus again, plus minus, okay? So let Vr be the phase R voltage across the, uh, you know, resistor and let Vc be the phase R voltage across the capacitor. Now what is same for both the elements? As I already said, it is current that will be same for both the elements, okay? So we can make a couple of statements here. Vr or angle of Vr, is it not same as angle of I? obvious right because for a resistor the voltage drop and the current through the resistor both are always going to be in phase so vr and i they'll be in phase that means what the angle of voltage is same as the angle of current angle of vr is same as what angle of i and the same current also flows through what capacitor but the voltage across cap is what vc and just now i told you what current leads voltage by 90 degrees that means angle of i is equal to what angle of vc plus 90 degrees yes or no angle of i is equal to what angle of vc plus 90 degrees that is the meaning of or that is the implication of current leading voltage by 90 degrees now 
if you add the two equations, if there is what one, if this is what two, if you add, if you sort of add these two, left hand side would become what angle of VR plus angle of I is equal to right hand side would be angle of I plus angle of VC plus 90 degrees. Again, angle of I and angle of I will get cancelled. Won't you get this thing? Angle of VR is equal to what angle of VC plus 90 degrees. This means VR leads VC by 90 degrees. So whenever you have a resistor and a capacitor connected in series, first of all they'll have the same current and always whatever be the frequency of operation, voltage across the resistor will lead the voltage across the capacitor by 90 degrees. So for example, on the phasor diagram, so first of all there is what the imaginary axis, there is what the real axis, imaginary, this is what real, okay. So this is what the complex plane, this one is what the complex plane and let's say, uh, let us say, This is what the phase are representing VC. This is what the phase are representing VC. And what do we have here? VR leads VC by 90 degrees. So if you have VC like this, what is the angle between VR and VC? 90 degrees. That means both the phase are, that is VR and VC, they are definitely going to be perpendicular. So once you have the uh, phase are uh, for, for, for what? VC. How do you get uh, VR? Rotate VC rotate VC by an angle of 90 degrees in what direction? In the anti-clockwise direction because it is what plus 90 degrees rotate VC by an angle of 90 degrees in the clockwise sorry anti-clockwise direction so want to get this so this would be VR and clearly you can see both the vectors or both the phasors they are what perpendicular yes so always in a branch containing a resistor and a capacitor, voltage across the resistor will lead the voltage across the capacitor by 90 degrees, okay? That means VR and VC are going to be perpendicular, yes? VR and VC are going to be perpendicular, okay? And then uh, let's say we have a branch that contains a resistor in series with inductor okay earlier we had resistor in series with capacitor now we have resistor in series with inductor r in series with l again in series what is same for both the elements current will be same let that uh, current through both the elements be some capital i once again capital vr is what voltage across the resistor or the phasor voltage across the resistor and capital VL is what the phasor voltage across the inductor yes now again for a resistor voltage and current will always be in phase uh, that means angle of VR is equal to what angle of I and then what is the thing for the inductor always for the inductor voltage leads current by 90 degrees again voltage leading current by 90 degrees is same as what angle of VL is equal to what angle of I plus 90 degrees that's the meaning of voltage leading current by 90 degrees again if you kind of subtract these two equations won't you get angle of VR minus angle of VL you are subtracting the second equation from the first equation then you get angle of VR minus angle of VL is equal to what? Minus 90 degrees. This can also be written as what? Angle of VL minus angle of VR equal to what? Plus 90 degrees. Again, what do you understand from this? Always the voltage across the inductor is going to lead the voltage across the resistor by 90 degrees. Yes. So always in a branch that contains a resistor in series with an inductor voltage across inductor will always lead the voltage across resistor by 90 degrees okay so vl leads 
V R by 90 degrees. V L leads V R by 90 degrees. Earlier for the R C branch, we found that V R always leads V C by 90 degrees. Now for the R L branch, always V L leads V R by 90 degrees. So once again, if you have to show the two phasors on the complex plane, it would be something like this. Again, this is what the imaginary axis. This is what the real axis. So let's say uh, VR is what this. So this vector or phase R is for VR. Now because VL leads VR by 90 degrees, that means VR should be rotated by 90 degrees in the clockwise, sorry, anti-clockwise direction. So this is going to be VL. So as you, can, you can see VL leads VR by 90 degrees. Once again, these two phasors are what? Always going to be perpendicular. So no matter what the frequency of operation is, no matter what the frequency of operation is, always voltage across inductor will lead the voltage across the resistor by 90 degrees whenever the inductor and the resistor both are in series. Okay. Well, look at this uh, connection. Are you not having three elements connected in parallel? Yes, is it not parallel connection of what? The resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor. Yes. So let this be R, let this be L, let this be C. I'll just uh, pull this down. What is going to be same for all the elements? What is going to be same for all the three elements? Voltage, because in parallel, voltage drop will be same for each and every element. So let's say, uh, let's say, sorry. Let us say capital V is what the phasor voltage across each and every element. So capital V is what the drop across R. It is the drop across L. It is also the drop across the capacitor, yes. And then let IR be the current through the resistor. Let, sorry, IL be the phasor current through the inductor. Let capital IC be the phasor current through the capacitor. You know, voltage is same for all the three uh, elements because all three elements are connected in parallel. So let us take voltage as what the reference phasor. And then, can't we say that IR will be in phase with V, yes. So here, IR will be in phase with capital V. And what is the thing for the inductor? Always inductor, current lags voltage by 90 degrees, yes. So we can say IR lags capital V by 90 degrees and what can we say about the capacitor for a capacitor always current leads voltage by 90 degrees so can't we say IC it leads capital V by you know 90 degrees yes so current through resistor in phase with the voltage current through the inductor lags the voltage by 90 degrees whereas the current through the capacitor it leads the voltage by 90 degrees okay you see, <coughs> IR lags V by 90 degrees, it is same as what? It is same as IR lags, well, this, this is actually IL, I'm sorry. IL, IL lags V by 90 degrees, yes. So this also has to be IL. So IL, it lags IR by 90 degrees. I hope you agree with this. Because IL lags V by 90 degrees, whereas V, it is in phase with IR. We can also say IL lags 
IR by 90 degrees. Yes. And when it comes to this statement, again IC leads V by 90 degrees. V is what in phase with IR. So I can also say IC leads IR by 90 degrees. Okay. IC leads IR by 90 degrees. IL leads IR by 90 degrees. IC leads, sorry, IL lags IR by 90 degrees. IC leads IR by 90 degrees. Yes. You see, IL lagging IR by 90 degrees, whereas IC leads IR by 90 degrees. Combining these two yellow color statements, can't we say that IC leads IL by 180 degrees? Yes. We can also say that IC leads IL by 180 degrees. IC leads IL by 180 degrees. Okay. Again, just for better insight, let us draw the phasor diagram where all the three phasor currents are shown. Okay. So again, this is what the imaginary axis, this is what the real axis, imaginary. This is what real. So uh, first you represent the phasor which is taken as reference. Which phasor is taken as reference? In parallel, you take the voltage as the reference phasor because voltage is going to be same for all the elements. In series, you take the current as the reference phasor because current will be same for all the elements. Okay. Right now we have R, L, and C in parallel which means they will have the same voltage. Let us take the voltage as the reference phasor. Okay. So the voltage itself can have any arbitrary angle. Let us say the voltage uh, phasor is something like this. So this is what capital V voltage phasor. Now you start with capital IR. That is what the phasor current through the resistor. Now for a resistor current and voltage are in phase that means even IR will be in the same direction as that of V, but the length everything will be different, okay? But the direction will be same, yes. So even IR will be along the same direction as that of the voltage, because IR and the voltage both are in phase, okay? Now IC leads IR by 90 degrees. IC leads IR by 90 degrees. That means IR should be rotated by 90 degrees in the anti-clockwise direction. Then you will get aligned with IC. Okay. So this is going to be IC and this angle is what going to be 90 degrees. And then IL lags IR by 90 degrees. Once again IR should be rotated by 90 degrees. Lagging it means what? Rotate by 90 degrees in clockwise direction okay so this is what IL once again these two are also what perpendicular you understood so here you can see that IC and IL both are facing in opposite direction so the angle between IC and IL is what 180 degrees same thing is written here IC leads IL by 180 degrees the angle between IC and IL is what 180 degrees but both IC and IL are what perpendicular to IR. IC perpendicular to what IR. IL also perpendicular to what IR. In fact, you will get the condition of resonance when IC and IL phasors have the same length. So next topic would be resonance. There you will find out that this parallel RLC network would be at resonance then when IC and IL which are always in 180 degrees out of phase have the same length. IC and IL always 180 degrees out of phase but at resonance both the phasors which are 180 degrees out of phase are going to have the same length. When you have two phasors which are 180 degrees out of phase and having the same length what is the sum of those two phasors? It will be zero. Yes or no? Because both the phasors have the same length and they are facing in opposite direction. When you add those two vectors, the sum is going to be zero. Yes. That is the condition of resonance. So at resonance, 
IC and IL will have the same length. But always at any frequency, IC and IL are going to be 180 degrees out of phase. Okay. So the point is what when you look at any network, you should be able to visualize which current will lead which current or which voltage will lead which, which voltage and also by how much. So this phase diagram should immediately come to your mind. That is the point, okay? Okay, once again, we have a branch that contains what? R, L, and C, all in series, okay? R, L, C. Again, in series, uh, current will be same for all the elements. Vr is what? Drop across the resistor. Vl is what? Drop across the inductor. Vc is what? Drop across the capacitor. So quickly, we can make a few statements. First of all, the reference phase R in this case has to be the current. Because current will be same for all the three elements. Okay. And uh, you know, angle of Vr will be equal to what angle of i because for a resistor voltage and current will be in phase and then for inductor for inductor angle of vl is equal to what angle of i plus 90 degrees because for inductor voltage leads current by 90 degrees and what can we write for a capacitor for a capacitor voltage always lags current by 90 degrees voltage lags current by 90 degrees that is same as what angle of AC is equal to what angle of I minus 90 degrees. Yes. So from here, can't we say that uh, angle of VL minus angle of AC is what 180 degrees? Yes or no? Angle of VL minus angle of AC is what 180 degrees. So in a series RLC branch, in a series RLC branch, always voltage across inductor will lead the voltage across the capacitor by 180 degrees. Always means what? Whatever be the frequency of operation, voltage across inductor will lead the voltage across capacitor by 180 degrees. If the angle between two phasors is what? 180 degrees, it only means what? Both the phasors are pointing in opposite direction. That is the implication of the angle between the two phasors being equal to what? 180 degrees. Yes. Again, uh, you know, we can say Vr, that is what voltage across the resistor, it leads, it leads Vc by 90 degrees and voltage across the inductor, in turn, it will lead Vr by 90 degrees. So once again, if you try to show various uh, phasors on the complex plane that is what the phasor diagram imaginary this is what real so first i told you what you should draw that phasor which is taken as the reference okay which is taken as the reference phasor in this uh, particular case because current is going to be same for all the elements this capital i would be the reference phasor so let this be capital i let this be capital I and then uh, represent represent the three voltage phasors that is what VR, VL and VC. Again VR and the current voltage across resistor and the current both are going to be in phase that means what they will be along the exact same direction. So already capital I is what in this direction even capital VR it will be along the same direction as I. And then VL leads VR by 90 degrees. VL leads VR by 90 degrees. It means what VR should be rotated by 90 degrees in the anti-clockwise direction. Okay. So this is going to be VL. This is going to be VL. Okay. And then VR leads VC by 90 degrees. Again, VR leading VC by 90 degrees is same as what? VC lagging vr by 90 degrees vc lags vr by 90 degrees it means what vr should be rotated by 90 degrees in the clockwise direction okay so this is going to be 
we see. So you can say this angle is what 90, this angle is also what 90 degrees. And the angle between VL and VC is what 180 degrees. So parallel RLC, parallel RLC, what is same for all the elements? Voltage will be same. And then current through the capacitor will always lead current through inductor by 180 degrees. Just go back to the previous slide. IC leads IL by 180 degrees all the time. IC leads IL by 180 degrees. And then when it comes to series RLC, current will be same for all the elements. Voltage across inductor will always lead voltage across capacitor by 180 degrees. VL always leads VC by 180 degrees at any frequency of operation. Even for series RLC network, we have a condition of resonance. And at that resonance condition, what happens is, look at the two phasors VL and VC. First of all, both are pointing in the opposite direction. Yes or no? VL and VC both are facing in opposite direction. Now, both the phasors, which are always 180 degrees out of phase, will have the same length or magnitude. That means this length and this length both will be equal and that both will become equal. Both the lengths will become equal only at resonance. Only at resonance. Okay, that means mod VL equal to mod VC only at resonance. I'll just write it. So when we discuss uh, resonance, it will become clear as to why uh, mod VL becomes equal to what mod VC. So mod VL equal to mod VC only at resonance. Similarly, even for parallel RLC network, always IC leads IL by 180 degrees. But these two phasors, which are 180 degrees out of phase, will have the same magnitude or the same length only at resonance. Only at resonance. That means this length. What is this length? Mod IC. What is this length? Mod IL. Remember, magnitude of the phasor is same as what length of the phasor. Yes or no? Magnitude is same as what length? So this length and this length would be equal only at resonance. In other words, mod IC equal to what mod IL only at resonance. Okay. So mod IC equal to mod IL only at resonance. So later on, when we formally define uh, you know, resonance for any linear one port network, then you will understand why mod IC becomes a mod IL at resonance or uh, mod VL becomes mod VC at resonance for the series RLC case. Okay? So this completes our uh, discussion on the notion of impedance. So impedance is very much uh, similar to what resistance, except that impedance is what a complex number, and it is the ratio of the phasor voltage to the phasor current. So there is uh, all the background that is required to be able to perform analysis of circuits at steady state in the phasor domain. So in the evening, we will continue this uh, discussion and take up uh, circuit analysis. Evening 6 o'clock, we will meet. Okay.